suggested I get a real estate license and start selling real estate instead of teaching. There you go. And I did it. Was that a KW agent? <laughs> well, I hesitate to say this, but it was 110 years ago. <laughs> you and look fabulous can, for 110. I'm yeah, pretty well preserved. Um, there was no such thing as KW at that point. Mm. That was 19... 81 or 82, I can't remember. I love that. I love it, I love it. Uh, you know, um, why Why else? Thank you for that, Debbie. I mean, as we see this screen here change, why Why did we jump into this business? Maybe this job. for me, I'm gonna talk. I think for me, it's about helping people achieve their yeah. dreams and their goals of home ownership and just all the people that you get to meet and all the beautiful homes you get to see. Definitely. Definitely. I would second that. Well, I got some homes. I got some beautiful homes to show you in a second. So stay tuned for that. I trust you get a kick out of them. Well, let's, let's get it going. I mean, I, when we look at this, the low cost of this entry called uh, this business called real estate, I mean, where else can you go where you can get a, a you know, a, a, a phenomenal business for that low down? I mean, what are, what are your thoughts when we're looking at these numbers here and the cost for us to be an agent. Now, this is based off KWR research and the averages across the country. So it might be more or less in your area. And yet, what are your thoughts when we're looking at this? It's too easy to get a license. It's too easy, Chris. I've been saying that for years. I agree. What does that do when, when we're talking about it's too easy? Well, how might that show up and how might that hinder most agents and maybe mindset, et cetera? They well, have... Yeah. <clears throat> unrealistic expectations of it's so easy to get a license and they expect to reap the riches and rewards instantaneously mm. without putting in the work that's required to achieve that. I love that. Thank you for that. You know, here, we, I appreciate that, Chris. And, you know, um, I think at, for us as agents, I think it, we feel that our education stops as soon as we know how to put a transaction together. <laughs> right as soon as all right i know how to sell a listing i know how to find a buyer i know how to negotiate and that's it school's out let's go i've been doing this 50 years and i'm still learning so don't put me in that category yeah I, I love that right you're on this conversation today and you're participating so i know what kind of uh, you know, person uh, you are, right? And so I appreciate you. And as we continue to have this dialogue, we keep it mo moving forward. You know, another reason why we love this business, obviously we have no financial ceilings and we know based off research that the average salaried individual peaks in income at the age of 45 to 49 years old. Ouch. Come on, come on. Where, you're telling me that I'm, I'm gonna work my, my behind off in a particular industry and um, you know, I'm gonna learn, learn, learn. I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna gain more insight, bring some more experience to the table, and I'm gonna make not too much more after I hit the age of 45 to 49. Ouch! And then we look at that trend line in real estate. Jesse, were you gonna say something? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I just, and in fact, it goes, it, it goes down once you mm -hmm. after 49. That's, um, I, I've never thought about that. Somebody yeah. forgot to tell me. <laughs> yeah, me, too. me too. <laughs> right. Well, hey, that's why we're on the real estate. That's why we're that orange line there. I'm right. 70 and there. it's still going up. So there, there I didn't go. get that memo. There you go. Right. That's why you're on the right roller coaster. Right. And so keep keep it going. Keep it going. roller coaster. You bet. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Season tickets. <laughs> season <laughs> season pass holder. Right. Let's keep it going. And here's the thing. I mean, another reason why we love this business is because every personality style out there can earn a phenomenal income. It's not for your high D's, your high S's, right? Whatever labels you want to put on it. And yet every type of personality style can make a phenomenal living. We have so many agents that are different variety of uh, analytical, high driver, um, amiable, stable, right? The, the bubbly type. And here's what happens in our business, the most part, and I want to address this. So don't shoot, don't shoot the messenger. And right, when we're talking about um, where, we, where we show up, it's like, man, that agent's making a ton of money. I'm going to go do that. The agents are making a ton of money doing cold calls. I'm going to go do that. Why? Oh, they're spending so much money on Zillow and they're making a ton of money. I'm going to go do that. Right. And then we, we go out and we follow the agents outside of us, right. That may not have, and probably don't have the same personality styles as we have the same, same behavioral styles we have. And yet we still expect to be successful the same way that they're successful in what they're doing. 
And so that's where all the options become. And obviously, obviously it's paralysis by analysis by paralysis. And yet what happens when we focus in on one choice? And here's an example of that, right? What if you're a high, um, high, uh, uh, assertive, right? And you say, you know what? Um, and, and this actually, let me back up a little bit. This actually goes and, and stems from a conversation called Six Personal Perspectives. If you've ever been through those courses, that course before, if you haven't, um, it's basically the uh, Gary Keller's um, analysis of the wealthy individuals that he had a, a an opportunity to work for prior to starting Keller Williams. And he found that he's never worked for anyone who wasn't a millionaire. And he found that uh, most millionaires had a certain mindset in regards to how they approach the obstacles in their lives. And so that's how the six personal perspectives came to be. And the one that hits home for me in regards to this chart here is the commit to self mastery, meaning we've got to master ourselves first. Until we master ourselves internally, our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, we're not going to be able to master anything outside of us. And that includes lead generation and any skills thereof that are going to allow us to move our businesses forward. So how are we doing in making sure that we're at peace with how we intend to learn, how we receive rejection, how we continue to, to grow and break through the challenges that we have? Because until we master ourselves, and it's the same concept of going between be, do, be, do, right? And it's kind of like that dialogue. Most people think that it's a be, do, and then a naturally achieve. And yet there's a lot more in a stronger relationship between becoming, which is the mindset piece, and going out there and building the skill set, which is the doing, right? So being, doing, being, doing. I intend to be a millionaire real estate agent. I'm not there yet. And yet I'm building and, 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 and creating the skill set that, it, that, it, it, that is required in order for me to achieve what millionaire real estate agents achieve. You get that? And yet until we understand that and we know that, all right, well, hey, I'm a high driver and I'm the kind of person to beat on a microwave to get it to go quicker. I do that. Yet at the same time, right, a high assertive. And then I might be the one who said, you know what? I'm going to smile and doubt because I want the results like that yesterday. I want to know if I'm what I'm doing well. Or I might be the high sociable type, the high, per, high um, influencer where I thrive off of doing events. Right. And I, that's where I do my lead generation through events or I'm a high analytical and I, try, I decide to do more of the, the online lead generation where I'm measuring my cost per click, cost per lead, cost per impression. Right. Knowing what your strengths are. Now, by the way, if you wanted to get an idea of what you might be good at, go out there and, and, and take a color personality assessment or a disc, either one or both are great. And yet go out there and, and see what your strengths are and list your strengths out. Also list out your um, your your opera, you, you know, what you what you what you love to do right? What you like to do out there. So list your strengths and what you like to do and see if you can find any patterns in between the two and how you might intend to lead gen, right? And then come to, peace, come to peace with how you intend to show up on that. Another great thing about this phenomenal business that we call real estate is that we get to choose our calendar, our schedules and what that looks like. And yet, man, I left that business or that job because other people were dictating my schedule and I'm in control of my calendar now. I'm the man, I'm the woman. And yet, guess what? We don't get to choose no hours. That's not an option spoiler alert, right? No option, no offer, no hours is not an option. And yet we can build a phenomenal business around the priorities that we, that are important to us. And that's the beautiful thing. Like a Wendy Papazon, when she jumped into the business as a, as a, a first year agent and Wendy Papazon, who's the wife of uh, Jay Papazon, who's a co-author to the millionaire real estate agent book. For those of you, you might know her story better than me and correct me if I'm wrong. And yet her first year working from 10 to three, because she's a mom and a wife first, right? Working from 10 to three, she closed 18 units that first year. Question, how if, you know, intent might she have, to have uh, jumped into that type of schedule calendar? Like how much, how much does she have to bring to that 10 to three every single day to be successful and hit that 18 units? How, I mean, question, that's a question for you. Feel free to unmute yourself. I mean, well, how might she have had to show shown up to be, to be able to accomplish those things? Who's doing it? takes two to tango, by the way. Hello, you better? Hey, you know, Mickey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? I'm um, well. So you've got to, um, you have to prioritize and block your time. Yes. And you have to guard that time. Yeah. Not let anything else in, interfere in with it. Yeah. So yeah, don't be a, be don't be a yes man, right? Be a no, do a, be a no man, right? right. <laughs> Being right. able to say no to those distractions, right? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Mickey. And that's so strong. Sure. And, and you, and what you say there it takes me to another point, because here's the thing. It's not about, you know, let's not judge our insides to other people's outsides, by the way. Right. Because it's so important. Um, you, you get to choose how you win. Success is relative. 
as long as you're personally winning and achieving your goals and hitting your goals, I'm all, I'm all great with that. High five to you, right? If you're doing that at 10 units a year or you're doing 10 units a month, high five to you. Congratulations. As long as your goals are being hit. And yet when we're talking about what is the, how can we show up in our, in our world and make sure that we're getting the most out of the day, uh, you know, that's how Wendy Pop is on with that focused effort, focused consistency and time blocking accordingly, Mickey, like you mentioned, she went from 10 units her first year to 100 million rounding out at the end of 2019. Again, we can build this business around any one of our priorities, whether it be our families or our careers, dual careers that we're working we could still build a phenomenal business. And here's where the, 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 the secret sauce lies. And there's, there's a couple different ingredients to the secret sauce that I trust that you heard, one of it being loving what you do. And yet as you look at that left-hand side is no long hours are not virtuous. So it's not about the amount of time we put into the day. It's about the focused effort that we put into the hours. And so when we're looking at what do we constitute as working and winning at a high level, what do our top agents can constitute as working? Well, I got, there's a rule of five in my, in my world. Right in the bold world that we talk to, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about it. If you're in bold pivot or uh, bold 2.0, you know the rule of five. What's that one? I'm gonna kick it off. Prospecting. What's after that? Who's doing it? Follow up. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Prospected. Lead. Follow up. Love that, Mickey. What else? Three more. Who's doing I'm it? I'm trying to blank right now. Appointments. Appointment, there you go. Yeah, what was next? Negotiating contracts. Right. And then the last one, this little piggy went to the market. Now, so the last one. Let's see. For the last one, two, two. So I know I know this. I just, it's just not coming this. to me right now. <laughs> you got this. I just, just, just Role play. Know, I've been, I've been taking a, a a medical leave of absence. So I haven't really done anything real estate related in about four months. But, well, hey, you, um, got, you got the top two. All right. And so I'm, I appreciate you. Back, right? Thank yep. you for that. And yet it's, it's our scripts. It's our practice. So by the way, if you want another acronym, cause we don't have enough acronyms in our company, um, have a planner, right? P L A N R prospect lead, follow up appointments, negotiations, and then R right. Role play plan R right. So make sure that you have that. And, and so it's about focusing on that top 20% that's going to get us majority of the, our, our, our efforts, right? The 20% that get us 80% of our results. And yet, how are we doing it, doing that every single day? What would our world look like? What would our businesses look like if we did those efforts every single day? What couldn't we accomplish? What, what, what in, uh, properties couldn't we purchase for investment when and for our retirement by being able to accomplish that? I'm just saying, these are just questions, right? Um, and so... When we're looking at time blocking, and you mentioned something there, Mickey, that I intend to address, and I usually address this early, later on, and it, it's that, that rule of three, according to the one thing. What goes into the calendar first? What are we putting in our calendars first, my friends? One, the one thing, whatever's yeah. going to get you to that. Yeah. So that, the first thing that goes in the calendar is our time off, by the way, right? So we time block our time off. That's where we take care of ourselves. We re-energize. Hey, it's halfway through the year. I am exhausted. Yeah, right. And yet here's the thing. If I wasn't connected to my why, I wouldn't be on this call with you today. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you that, right? With a smile. And yet time block our time off, time block our lead gen time, and then time blocking finally our uh, planning time. Gary Keller said something uh, profound at the end of the year or beginning of this year. And he was asked, why do most agents fail at kicking off their, their year successfully? He said, well, it's not really a, a, a once a year thing. This is a year round issue where most agents don't, uh, uh, plan effectively and they and they don't protect their planning time and they don't execute on the plan right so what does that look like what does that look like for us to have a uh, it time blocked in our calendar our planning time which would be what um you know for me it's every sunday afternoon around two to three and it's by habit now i'm like all right winding up and grab my 411 grab my calendar what did i do last week what didn't i do the last week what can i move to this week what's going to get done what's that top 20 percent that's going to achieve my goals and have a relationship with my, 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 my 411, right? And so those, that's what we're talking about here. So when we're talking about, you know, really another reason why we love this industry is let's talk about some investing. Huh? Let's talk about building wealth. I know that's why we're in this business because here's the thing, I, I had to remind myself two years ago, and, and this is okay if you've forgotten about one of the inside opportunities, one of the best inside opportunities to invest, 
the one that won't get you locked up, by the way, um, you know, just ask Martha Stewart, right? Financial industry, they'll lock you up for that. And yet when you're talking about our industry here by disclosing and make sure it's a win, 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 we're fine, right? And, and, and that's where we win at a high level. And yet, you know, most agents, I, I found that, um, you know, Gary Keller said that we actually would rather go out there and take a listing and go find a buyer versus out taking a listing and going out and finding a partner to buy it with. Right. We hmm. have the, the unique opportunity to truly impact our wealth through real estate. And when we're talking about, you know, some of the, the why people live vicariously through you, meaning that there's whole shows on TV, HGTV, if you will, about real estate and loving it or listing it, million dollar listing. I mean, people love what it is that we have to offer and are living through social media, are loving your, your, your posts and social media because of they would love to be in your, your shoes. How are we doing it? Taking on that attention and that attraction of that industry of the industry that we wield, we're the on-ramp to other people's successes in, through investing in real estate. And we get to drive that vehicle called real estate, right? And helping them do that. And when we're talking about the inside opportunity to invest, what if we went to our investors? By the way, do you have I buyers in your market, Jesse? Oh yeah. So we have the iBuyer conversation. So by the way, if we haven't addressed the iBuyer conversation with our presentations, I would encourage us to do that. Like for instance, going out there and comparing your, the, the, the average iBuyer out there compared to what you offer and maybe have a list of uh, pros and cons with each one and then addressing it. Because here's what consumers have said. Consumers have said that they want more transparency, more options and more convenience. Convenience being a big part of that, meaning hassle-free, um, uh, flexible times to be able to move out as well as being able to create uh, or be able to sell their property and not having anything in, in contingency for, you know, being able to put, you know, the home in showing condition and keeping it there and keeping it clean, you know, especially with the COVID, if somebody's living in their home, that's a tough scenario. And so yet, if you could offer client strategic methods for, for them to be able to sell direct to you or your iBuyer entity that you create, do your practice in an ethical and disclosed manner, I don't see how you could lose. By the way, 90% of inquiries made to iBuyers are selling in, in 12 months. Let me say that again. 90% of iBuyers are that made inquiries or 9% of sellers who are making inquiries to iBuyers are selling within 12 months. 60% are listing, by the way. What, what would it look like for us to go and create marketing around this dialogue and set up our own iBuyer portal by going to an inv uh, investor or investors, by the way, hey, by the way, there's never been more money sitting on the sidelines waiting to be directed than today. People have never had more money in their savings than today. People have, have never had more equity tied up into their properties than today. So the money's there. Question is, do we have the deal? Hey, Brian, I could never be able to afford this property, et cetera, et cetera. Well, question is, you show me the deal, I'll show you the money. I think I just quoted a little bit of Jerry Maguire that I, I apologize, right? Show me the money, right? So when we're talking about being able to bring value to our consumers and our investors, could you go to investor A here and say, hey, investor, if I were able to find you a property 80% of the dollar and, and it cash flows and it got you a 12 to 15% rate of return annualized, would you invest in that property? And I'm seeing some, would you invest in that property? I trust that you would invest in that property because that's a great deal. You're walking into equity plus you, you're cash flowing. I mean, what we, doesn't get any better. And that's what we get to bring. And yet if you had an investor that would say yes to that, you've just created an iBuyer partnership. Get, a, get an attorney in the conversation, maybe make some things happen. And here's why you might want to get an attorney into the conversation is because could you actually partner with those same iBuyers for you to get a piece of the pie? Meaning if I put in my commission, uh, sacrifice my short-term cash flow for long-term gain, uh, investor A, would you be able to get me a piece of the pie? Would you be okay with that? Oh, by the way, you're not? Okay, I've got a whole line of other investors here, out here who are looking to get to what I have, which is I get to be paid in direct correlation to the amount of off-market sellers that I find and are able to help transact and move for. Can anybody snap to this? Anybody else snapping? 
this is this right here. I appreciate it. Right. So, you know, let's, let's, let's have some fun. This is what we get to do. We get to bring that type of value to investors to, to how about our SOI and our databases? I mean, come on. I mean, where else can you go with the average, the average net worth? We get to impact this number. This is a, this is an issue I'm looking at right here. Take a picture of this, put it on your social media, ask who know, who, who, you who people know that would love to invest and create worth net worth through an holding real estate as an asset. $5,200 as a rental uh, is an average net worth of a renter versus 238, that of a, of a homeowner or 45 times net worth difference. I mean, come on. That just shows that we've got work to do. Anybody that's a renter right now with record low interest rates and flexible loan programs out there, they, they're, they, they need to be hearing this conversation. Why would you knowingly want to rent when you see a chart, chart like this? It's just people just don't know. By the way, I mean, could you, for those of, uh, you know, for those of us who have past clients or a good book of business who already own homes or we have SOI or database, uh, you know, sellers or potential sellers, I mean, could we go to them, homeowners who, um, you know, have small kids and, and there's this idea of a kitty condo I got out, you know, from Gene Rivers, who's a brilliant agent out of Florida, by the way, could you go to those homeowners or, or those um, SOI people in your database and say, for every client or a child, excuse me, every child that they have, could they buy an investment property for them? Fast forward 10, 15, 20 years, would that be their uh, subscript or their prescription to fight student loan debt? All right, now we're talking. Now we're bringing value. What if we created a dialogue with our SOI so, so powerful around investing in home ownership and, and, and presenting them regularly, whether it be via a month, creating your own investor forum and a wealth building forum, by the way, that we are able to construct and hold and, and, and host every single month and talk about how we move our net worth forward through um, our asset acquisitions or acquisitions of assets uh, and through real estate. And what would it look like for us to have 10 to 15 to 20 or more people every single year that want to buy one home every single year for the next five years? Would anybody else snap to that? Do, right. we all have, do we all know that we have an we have an OP that would love to help you with that, by the way? Oh, my goodness. You've got an OP that would love to help you with that? She is, she is a wealth builder, and her, her book comes out in uh, September. And, uh, and yeah, she would love to help you all with that. That's awesome. Would there be analysis of the deal? Uh, maybe talking about, you know, who knows? I mean, it sounds like a great opportunity there. I mean, I love that. And that's what we're thinking here is how can we do, what can we do to build that conversation where we're talking to our SOI and what would change about our businesses if we had 10 people lined up every single year or 20 people lined up every single year to start of January, I've got to go out and go house hunting for these investors. Oh, by the way, could you go out there and, and, and be a play matchmaker and go out and find those sellers and bring those sellers to your buyers? Now, how does lead generation change when you, you're able to market, I have a buyer letters or postcards or prospecting. Now it's not of a, I, hey, I'm coming for you to, to let me bring your, your let, me, let me list your house. How about a conversation of, I've got a buyer who's interested in buying your house. What's your price? Or who do you know in your neighborhood that's interested in selling? I've got a buyer interested. Now, Leah, can, are, we, are we sensing that lead generation has changed or can change? Are we, are we picking that up here? Uh, because, I mean, what happens when we go, by the way, if you haven't gone to Keller Inc., download that uh, Millionaire Real Estate Investor Resource Kit there, which includes a, 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 an investor workshop PowerPoint along with a handout. And now you've got a ready-made starter kit on wealth building. And, and, and by the way, I mean, we're talking about Zoom here. Um, and, and, and I trust that we're getting comfortable with the new normal called, you know, our zoom world, right. If you will, or digital world and being digitally based and market and physically enhanced. And if we're talking about that, what would it look like for us to be able to go? And by the way, we're doing it. So I know what it looks like. And yet being able to hold, I mean, we're holding a webinar twice a month, um, specifically on home buying. We're also doing uh, another two with, with investing, which I've created an investor pool based off of, um, basically allowing me to raise about um, half a million dollars or so an income for the first part of this year of, of down payment on assets to be able to go out there and acquire property with some of my friends, SOI now partners, right? Because again, we're thinking in, in the same manner because they intend to build 
wealth through real estate. And yet, you know, even lead generating for first time home buyers. I mean, my, my wife and business partner, she's taken 10 buyer contracts in the last month by doing two home buyer sessions. Um, your typical consultations, if you will, we just made it more of a webinar for multiple people to queue in, learn together in a group setting. And now her lead generation is to get to that group, get people into that group. And her lead follow-up is to follow up with people outside of that group, whether they showed up or they did not. We kept it simple. Lead gen to the presentation and then lead follow-up out of that presentation. I'm just saying, right? These are all things. These are all things that we could do. Is this getting a little too deep? I mean, what are we hearing? What do you, what do you, I want to get some feedback on this conversation that we're having. Make sure I'm not talking to myself. Cause I do that from time to time. <laughs> Don't you judge me. <laughs> I would what, never, what we would never. What, I mean, what questions do y'all have? Like, is that, I know it's a lot of, I know it's a, it's like, I mean, it's like drinking from a fire hose and I love it. Thank you. And so you, y'all have got to have a question. Anybody thought of, of doing this, have done it, never done it, intend to do uh, any of the conversation that we've had? I have had? a question. So yeah, you're sure. saying your wife, she lead, so she did a webinar it, for a neighborhood or what? Great question. Yeah. Uh, so what she does is she does a home buyer uh, consultation for the masses. So she lead generates. So she has two slot time slots every single month. Uh, we typically it's the first and the third uh, Saturday of the month at noon. And literally the conversation is on social media, on text, on calls to the database. We market it, we email it. And hey, who do you know that wants to you know join in on a, um, a webinar on building wealth through home ownership? And so that's literally the question. And now we're getting referrals because um, it started out as first it was those people. And then those people have gone through it, whether they're looking to buy this year or not. And now we're getting a stream of referrals and say, hey, it's that time again. And now, obviously, we're getting referrals and we're rewarding them and say, you know, hey, who do you know? We're doing another drawing. If you kick up somebody into the hat to, to participate in our class, right, we'll, we'll put you in a drawing for a gift card. Obviously, you want to make sure that it's disclosed and it's properly um, done with your, say, um, and, you know, make sure it's not a RESPA violation or anything like that, according to your, you know, your rules there. Um, um, and yet make sure that you, you know, um, that's the form. And so we're getting an average 15 to 20 people every single session into that group. And then we're just following up accordingly. And um, so her lead generation is literally, hey, are you able to make it this week? Right. Hey, are you able to make it this week? Who do you know that can that can make it? And then the lead follow up is, all right, what did you think? All right. Where are you at? Oh, by the way, we're also using the polls in the Zoom platform as well. So when they're on there, we're, we're putting up a poll and we're asking you know, based on this information, you know, um, you know, how often are you looking at real estate? Another question is, you know, based off of this information, when would you like to be in a home buy, right? Um, and, and we're asking certain questions on, hey, how is this information for you? Do you was it a five star, five out of five, um, all of the above? So we're doing that survey and or poll in that conversation as well. Gotcha. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you um, for asking. Any other questions? Thoughts. If I if I just plus yes. that real quick, Please. guys, we yes. can use uh, first time home buyers is a target in Facebook ads through command. Yes, you mm -hmm. want a whole boatload of leads to call on and invite to a first first time home buyer seminar. That's 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 how you do it. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Great, 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 great answer. If you're on yeah. Facebook and you have any questions or ahas, make sure that you put them in the chat. I'm watching, so I'll get them online. Sweet. Thank you, Diana. Shall we keep it going, huh? Anybody else uh, ready to have some fun? Hey, uh, where else can you go where you can get uh, the opportunity to see some amazing property like this? I mean, come on. I mean, wallpaper on the ceiling, that's unique, right? That's extravagant. This is a real MLS picture, by the way, right? Wallpaper on the back of the door, that's, now that's creative. I've never seen that before, right? Now you're committed. You're committed to the pattern. Right, uh, matching couch as well. So oh, that's then, a bed. Oh, that's a couch bed. I could not. Yeah. Even, I couldn't figure it out. I could. I couldn't it's figure it out. it's 3D, right? It like it looked a little 3D there for a second. <laughs> uh, I'm me, just uh, wondering where they found the sheets and bedding that actually match the wallpaper, and it's on the ceiling too. Uh, yeah, right. And you got a mirror just in case you couldn't get enough. <laughs> I gotta see it all. I gotta see it behind me. Um, how about this one? This is for the you know the cooking enthusiasts, right? In case that you're a fan of uh, Emerald or Rachel Ray, you can interview your guests while stir the eggs at the same time. This is a kitchen, right? So uh, this is a real life kitchen. MLS again. I couldn't make these up. All right. 
now the next one is my favorite this is like i call this a pit stop in the event that uh you know you couldn't make it all the way up the stairs to relieve yourself uh, then you've always got the pit stop it's okay i see this one That's all right <laughs> hey by the way this got a view so you know it's, it's we add a little bit of a uh, you know value there to the property all right. So now that we've had that break state there, let's get back to business, shall we? <laughs> I like the shock and awe. <laughs> this, I, you know, by the way, I, I kind of just sit there and I'm like, all right, how about the next one? I just watch the faces. So that's my kick out of today. So thank you. Um, yeah, well, let's get back into business. We, I think I talked about earlier on when we, we say, I think we get into this business and we master the transaction and that's it, right? We get into this business. I know how to take a listing. I know how to work a buyer. I know how to do my thing and I'm making good money. And that's it. And yet the difference between going from a salesperson to a, a business owner, a true business owner is what we're about to talk about right now, right? So the dialogue is on the left-hand side here, as you see, this is what you do. When you first start your business, you're all responsible. It's I, 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 right? I do the lead gen. I take the listings. I will service the buyers. I do the admin. Now you do all of that until you can afford to buy your time back. Now, what that means is, is, is basically us earning the right and the ability to uh, get out of the way of being the bottleneck to our organic growth to our business. Because oftentimes, most agents, we bottleneck the growth of our business. We make it more complex than it has to be, right? We, we, we learn how to transact tra uh, properties quickly. And yet the, the second half of that is, am I truly being a business owner and am I scaling the business? You know, scaling businesses is not an easy task. And there's a lot of mastery around that practice. And that's why you see only a few agents really going and taking their businesses and double it every single year, right? If you want to be a Gary Keller, just grow your business on average 20% every single year for two decades. And that's how you become a Gary Keller. And I think I might be shortchanging that number. I heard it's 40. And yet even that 40% every single year for two decades, that sounds a little bit too much. So I watered it down, down to 20% year growth year over year for 20 years, right? You'd literally be a great Gary Keller. And yet when we're talking about being at the top of that pyramid there, and when we have the, uh, uh, the ability to afford our time back, but through admin leverage, we, we, that's the concept in career vision that we talk about, by the way, is we go from I'm doing everything which is the left-hand side of the triangle. So we do everything where, you know, you hire your first admin. Now you bring them in into your world and you're, you're, you're teaching them, you're coaching them on what to do, how to do it and, and when to do it, all your systems and operations and everything. And then, so it's the, we we're doing everything. And then it goes from the, the from the, we to they and there. Now, this is a dialogue by the way that we're having of about, of, about mastery in business, right? Scaling leverage delegation. And by the way, this is a leadership conversation. This is the leadership conversation. How do you lead your employees in a time of a COVID? How do you lead, how do you make sure that they're okay and that they're, they're empowered and they're focused every single day? That's a leadership dialogue. And so this is the, 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 the right-hand side, the, 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 the page less turned to as an agent, by the way, right? Because I, I, you know, we'll talk about more of that in a second. And yet, so we go from I do everything to we do it. And we're only in the we mode until um, they get, they, they're in mastery, the admin or whomever that we've just brought in are in mastery around their, their roles and their tasks. So they go from we to they, now they got it. Once they got it, that means that I've just bought my 30 to 40 hours back per week of, of admin. I'm putting that back into lead generation, or I'm putting that back into, uh, or splitting that time with lead generation and, or my family. Guess what? It's my business. I get to choose right? It's your business. You get to choose. And so once we get into the, the, the they've got it. Now, the, the rarity of, of, of leverage is that you get people from they to there, meaning that they, own, they, they got it to it's theirs. They own it, right? Theirs is they're, they're owning the role. They got the task. They're, they're like, hey, Jesse, get out of the way. I got this. You know, you're, you're holding me back. You're holding me down. You go out there, take your listings. And I'm, I got the fort. I'm holding the fort down. Right. What couldn't we accomplish when we have enough people to, to delegate to? Right. And, and so once we have somebody like that, we can go out there and continue to build the sales business, uh, the buyer side. And we leverage out the showing assistance first and then the buyer's agent role. Right. Because you got to earn the right to become a buyer's agent. And then you leverage out the listings and then you finally leverage out the last thing to go be in the, the, the lead gen. What can we do or, and or accomplish with enough sellable listings and enough great people in their mode? What couldn't we get done? Like that's the conversation of us going, like you going on vacation and coming back to more business than when you left. I mean, that, that, that's like a turnaround. 
have to turn around and snap, man. I mean, I'm telling you, just that's where you start to really have fun in the business. And again, no judgment. It's not about if you're not there yet. It's not about it's not about that. It's about, you know, are you enjoying yourself and are you learning to grow your business every single day? Because the fun and the mastery around this this craft is that I'm getting better every single day. Right. And no matter where that leads you, that's up to you. And yet, are you challenging yourself and getting better every single day? And here's the thing. When we master this book, by the way, and now I, I don't, I, I cringe at calling it a book. It's more of a blueprint, right? When we master this blueprint, by the way, this allows us to become a franchise within a franchise. Brian, what do you mean? Well, this means that, you know, could we have this dialogue and have a $2,500 startup? And what does a franchisor offer its franchisees? Do they, do they, do they teach them how to hire? Check. We've got that. Do they, do they offer job descriptions? Check. We've got that. Do they offer a training guide? Check. We've got that. Do they offer scripts? Check. We've got that. Do they offer a system, whether it be a, 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 a POS point of sale system, right? Or a, a marketing and advertising system. Do we have a command that handles all of that? Check, 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 and check, right? So then when we're talking about building a big business, it's really just on us on whether we decide to or not. It's your decision and that's okay. And so depending on whatever it is that you choose to accomplish, there's a recipe in this recipe book for every level of this business, right? This is a playbook. This is, this is, we already got the coach. We've got an award-winning coach. We've got a, a, a championship level coach that's taken us to the, to the chip five, five years in a row, if you will, right? Gary Keller or the, the, the overall leadership staff at KW. And all we have to do is run the plays. When we run the plays, we win championships. How are we doing at running the place? And by the way, what would happen on any other level, uh, championship level team if we didn't run the place? There's no consequences in this business and that's okay. And that's fine. And kind of going back to what Chris said, if we would have spent more money into having to get into this business, would we treat it differently? Ooh, now I'm on my soapbox. I apologize. Let me get down. <laughs> right. And you know, here's, here's the opportunity. Come on, look at these franchises here. And we're looking at 124. If we slot the $124,000 down on the table today to start a real estate practice, would we have a full court press on this business on that and that investment capital to make sure that we're getting that return on investment back? And yet $2,500, it's like a, it's like a bad night in Vegas. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, you know, depending on who you are and where you are and your relative, that's, that's all relative, right? 25,000, that might be a bad night in Vegas for some people. I'm just saying, right? For me, 2,500, I don't like losing period. So $25 or 2,500, either way, I don't like to lose. Uh, and yet when we ask the business, what, what, why do we fall out of love with this business? Well, we don't know. We say we don't know what to do. And I just go back to, hey, have you mastered this book yet? Right? We also say we don't know how to do it. So the conversation is, um, because we're a, a real estate company focused on research and development, and we're the number one training organization of, across all industries, and we know our stats, we know our numbers, we also know our top agents are getting 80 to 90% of their business from only three sources. If you want to know what they are, repeat, referrals, shocker, and shocker, and then shocker, third shocker is this SOI and database. That's it. And we're making hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars in gross commission income by those top three sources. We overcomplify this. Oh, we, we, we complicate this thing, this business. And yeah, let's keep it simple, shall we? And then learn the rest as you go. We're, and that's why Bold is so successful because we learn, go do, learn, go do, learn, go do, be successful, come back, adjust, learn, go do. Right? And, and that's the, it, we're in activity as we go. We, we also spend too much uh, doing too little right? There's too much to do in too little time. We're focusing on that. We talked about the time blocking, right? And so making sure that we're putting in that 20% and learning to say no to certain things that would stop us from growing at the highest level, right? And that's what we're talking about. Failure to follow the plan. Like we mentioned about Gary Keller said earlier on, right? In the year and yet failure to, you know, to, to, to execute and we are unable to execute and our, our likely chance of executing drastically reduces when we overcomplicate things. If you want to drive up your ability to implement, then, then make it simple. Keep it simple. And then focus on growing the business and then running it. And the key, key, key phrase there, running the business. Don't let the business run you. Right? That's a conversation between getting proactive and staying being proactive versus being reactive. Proactive, in my mind, is developing systems, averaging, having leverage, and it's tools, systems, uh, systems tools, and, and people in that order. Right? And, and planning and planning for how we're going to execute and executing that plan. 
That's proactive. Reactive, it's the, you know, all right, I got to go because I got a, a, a showing that just called me, right? And you're in mid midway through your lead generation and you haven't finished your lead gen and yet you're going to go out and show a, a client that hasn't been pre-approved and haven't worked your way through the system. Again, no judgment. I know we've all been there. I've been there. And yet, again, we're talking about best practice. I don't coach to the level that you are. I coach to the level that you intend to go to, right? And so we're talking about um, keeping it, uh, you know, overcomplicated, overcommitted, right, is where we start to figure out where, hey, we fall out of love with this business. We don't prioritize. We don't say no. We don't delegate. We don't manage our expenses. Um, the expense management piece is an interesting one because I know that in here, at one point, we were, we were all instructed like we did to cut our expenses, I would encourage you that that's not a one and done, by the way. It's not a one and done for, for a purpose and a reason I'm going to share with you right now is that if you go to Lean and Leverage, which is one of the episodes of Think Like a CEO that Jay Papasan so eloquently said, is that our expenses break down to be about four, four, four lists, right? And if you were going to take your, your itemized list of your expenses over the, the last 12 months and you were going to label them, right, your A's would be the ones that you can't do without. Your B's would be the ones that you... You, it would be uncomfortable for you to do without it. Your C's is, you know, your, hey, I, I don't need this. And your, your D's are, why do I have this? Now, here's the thing. Here's what I want you to understand is that at the beginning of this year, you might have came in with, man, Open Home, open home Pro or Open House Pro was, an, was a B. And yet, is it a B today? If you know what Open Home Pro is, that's an open house tool, right? That you pay maybe nine bucks a month or whatever the case to, 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 to service your open houses and, and, and lead capture your open houses. And yet, if you're not doing that today, hmm. now, like, by the way, in January, Zoom might have been a C. And yet, Zoom today in your business, is that an A? I can tell you right now, it's a definitely an A. Right. And so I, matter of fact, I don't have enough storage for my Zoom, right? I got to go, I got to double down on more storage for my recordings. Right. And so these are all things that we think about. Uh, and so manage those expenses and revisit them regularly or right? being uh, being in relationship with them. And then uh, we have the wrong people doing the wrong thing. So for those of you who are in leverage and you have leverage in your world, um, you know, poor hires, poor training, no standards, no accountability. Right. We're doing things that suck energy and working with people that suck energy. Stop it. Stop it. Your energy is better than that. Your time is more valuable than that. And also, it, this is not this not this does not stop in the world of a, um, of 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 uh, coaching and or, you know, um, uh, and or um, leverage and having people. This also goes into our clients. Some of us are tethered to clients that we don't like. Matter of fact, that we get a little, we got to go out and find the Tums anytime that our client calls, right? Upset stomach, right? And you know, heartburn when that one client calls, you know, no judgment. It happens. I've been there. We've all been there. And yet the reason why we keep those clients longer than we should, because we don't have a backup client to replace them with because we're not making the lead generation fun. When the lead generation becomes fun and it's filled with purpose and meaning, we're going to have more than enough people to, to work with and prioritize that, that opportunity to, to grow. Um, don't manage our health. I'm going to get through this real quick and then um, I want your ahas. We don't manage our health. And that goes into like what we talked about on the first thing that we time block, spiritual, physical, emotional, financial. How are we doing in, in revisiting these on our time off and our time uh, time apart, right? I'll make sure that we're, we're our downtime. And then why do we lose fun? Obviously, as a, as, as a, as an agent, we talk about, we don't have the fun in the lead gen, right? And if that's the majority of what we have to do to put food on the table, um, and what we choose to do, and if we're not enjoying it, then you see where the problem arises, figure out a way to make your lead gen fun. Right. And then say, we right. Enjoy it. Right. And I'm a grown man. And I just said, we, yes, I did that. And yet Thank I could only you. do that if I enjoyed my time <laughs> and I enjoyed what I do. And so, um, and let's connect what we do with helping people. Connect what we do with helping people, right? What you do with helping people. Uh, now uh, I'm going to wrap it up with this last couple slides here. We become too attached to the job money, which doesn't allow us to delegate the jobs that we don't like or do well. Ouch. That's the I, 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 I can only do this. I can only do that. And yet where I truly believe where the growth lies in our industry and for majority of agents is being comfortable uh, with the growth pattern of their business and saying, you know what? I can't manage everything. And yet I can leverage, I can have great people to help me manage everything. And yet we invest more in lifestyle instead of the people or the lead generation. Ooh, don't shoot, don't shoot, just a messenger, right? And yet this is the dialogue. This is why we don't grow our business. 
Now, if you would have said, Brian, everything that you said up until this point is, is junk, it's trash. Um, I'm wasting my time. I trust that I'm able to turn around with this slide, next slide right here, right? And and, and this is the, about our databases. If you were to say, hey, Brian, how do I earn two million a year in gross commission income or more? I would say, get to uh, your database. Um, it's a 14,000 people in your database as quick as possible and, and, and market to it 36 times a year or three times a month. Simple as that. It's a people game. It's a numbers game as well. It's a relationship and people game. A contact without the contract, right? So you can't have the contract, right, without the contact. And yet the difference in between the contact and the contract is the R. It's a relationship. How are we doing building that relationship and staying top of mind and in value and staying valuable so that people are in our databases? And I can tell you, 90% of the people that I, I, as a team leader, I interviewed over a certain amount of years, 1,500 appointments, in, in, in appointments roughly, uh, of, uh, in interviews with agents outside of KW, I can tell you about 90% did not have a CRM and used their cell phone and or spreadsheets to manage their businesses, 90%. So you, yes, I am telling you that you could have a, 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 a head and shoulders lead on majority of the, your competition, 90% of them roughly by just having a CRM and utilizing a system like command, because where else can you manage? And by the way, you look at the size of database times the average annual touch equals the total annual touches. Where else can you manage 484,000 touches to, for that kind of income? Like you you got to, if you're doing that through a spreadsheet, you've got to have too many people to help you manage those touches. Whereas you can just be, be more efficient and work your business through, uh, through command, right? And have a lot of those touches go off for you systematically. And then finally, we allow what we do to never be enough, right? We allow what we do to never be enough. And uh, Gary Keller says, um, you know, obviously there's a fine line between gratitude and yet never settling. How are we doing in, in both? Are we listening to what we're grateful for? Because we know that we won't get anything else until we're grateful for it. And yet, how are we doing in making sure that we are never never, never settling? So um, with that being said, I want to just pivot, no pun intended, to um, a bold pivot dialogue. And I trust that uh, y'all are all fans of, of bold. And yet, what I would tell you is that we're, we're halfway through the year, a bit over now. And yet, we're halfway through the year. And if not bold, to keep your mindset sharp, what else are you doing? What are you subscribing to? Because my question for you is, how are you feeling right now? If you're anything like me, you're dog tired. You're exhausted. You're probably a little fatigued, a little grumpy. All, be, all the above for me. And yet, how are you keeping your mindset sharp and, and focused? Right? Um, because here's the thing. If you follow sports, you've ever been an athlete, you've ever been a fan of athletes or sports, you know that and coaches tell, you know, and I coach to this and I've been a coach and I've been in coaching for a long time now. As soon as the fatigue sets in, the tiredness shows up, the mindset goes. And as soon as the mindset goes, your actions follow. I trust that you heard that. As soon as the mindset goes, your actions follow. So if you're the, the sole breadwinner in your household or you're, uh, you're an integral part of the, uh, the, the, the earnings in your household, no one, I, I believe, on this call showed up and automatically got paid today. We all have to show up, and this is an investment in your time, and so I appreciate how you're allocating your time to continue to growth, and I've trusted I've, I've offered some value to keep helping you work efficiently and, and, and energetically because the zeal and the passion, I trust that you know that I love what I do and I love this industry. And I trust that you will have some insight on how you can translate that to your consumers, your clients and your SOI, your databases and your families at a higher level. Right. And I trust that you got a couple of nuggets there because that's the secret sauce. Enthusiasm sells. And if you are not enthusiastic about in these times and it, here it is certainty and enthusiasm. And if you can build trust, mind share now, or mind, mind share now is market share later. I don't know that we have the opportunity to crawl up underneath a rock that's big enough to house ourselves, right? And crawl underneath a rock and hide until this whole thing is over. We don't get that luxury, especially if you have to put food on the table. So what is it that you're doing to mentally fortify yourself, get engaged, Get focused and make sure that you're putting the right time uh, with the right effort allocated. Efficiency is more the most important it's ever been. What are you using? If not bold pivot, what are you using to get back and double down on your business and your strategies?
$99. And where else can you go where you can get four sessions a week for a couple hours with coaches, also great content, and also interviews from our top agents, top 100 that we're adding in, by the way, on top of accountability. We have a market center accountability kit that we'll be offering, by the way. Right, we heard you. So where else can you go where you can get that for $99? Now we're talking about, again, we came into this $2,500 business <laughs> startup, right? And, and we were talking about small numbers. It may not be scary enough for us to say, eh, I don't know if it's going to work, whatever. Or I've been bold already. Here's the thing. How many times have we mastered this book? If we're in mastery about the concept or mastering around six personal perspectives, what are we doing to keep ourselves inspired and keep moving forward? So um, I'm going to step down off the soapbox now. Um, I'm grateful for you. Um, I do want to offer you a deliverable that um, I'm excited about. I'm excited to offer. And what that is, is basically a, um, I've got a smart plan that I'm going to offer you. Um, so meaning that when you go out and you do my survey at bigrealestatebusiness.com and you fill out my survey, I'm going to send you a smart plan um, to convert all the buyer leads that you're going to be getting um, as a result of bold pivot, right? And, and seller leads, as well as a opportunities pipeline video on how to set your opportunities up for success to allow you to monetize your pipeline and see the gaps between your lead generation for you to know where your gaps are in your business a year out and forecast your commission a year out. I'm going to give you that video on how to do that me walking you through that on top of an, a checklist that you could use to have a repeatable and duplicatable transaction for your buyers and sellers. So, and you can make that yours and make it better. So I'm going to offer you those three things by going to bigrealestatebusiness.com. And obviously you see there, sign up for Bold Pivot uh, by going to bold.kdu.com. And I trust that this is valuable for you. And I am done. I'm out of, out of, out of y'all, y'all do me, do me a favor. Take yourselves off mute. All of y'all. Take yourselves off mute and give Brian back some energy. I'm going to give you one aha uh -huh and prepare y'all's aha uh, uh -huh and give him back the energy that he gave us. And um, hey, come to peace with your personality. There is a there is a way to lead gen regardless of a personality type that okay. you will love. Right? I loved that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Who next? Thank you. I saved y'all. I, I saved y'all by going first. <laughs> Thank you for that. I just so, I so appreciate you, Brian. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I appreciate you, Jesse, for inviting me in. Uh, Brian, I am in real estate school, so I don't even have a license yet, and I'm learning lots. You're in the family, baby. Come on. I know yeah. it. You're going to be great. Take those nuggets and run with them. There you Brian, go. Thank, thank you. I enjoyed it, and I thank like you, all of your little analogy about nuggets and sauce and all that. I think <laughs> And I really like show. that basically you're telling people, you know, these agents, it's all there for them. Yes. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yes. And I thought you did a great job. I think you're a bright, a bright spot. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I'm grateful. Sort of. I mean, being Love here. you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm racking up my Zoom uh, freaking flyer miles right now. Oh, so wow. I, can cash, <laughs> yes. I can cash those in. I'll tell you, I'll go anywhere in the world. Hey, how do you do that? You didn't tell us that. I know. Right? Well, that's 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 more secret sauce for later. The next the next Zoom. <laughs> no, no, Brian, we don't have we, those. we we love you. Thank you. I, I've uh, I've a thank you to send you. And um, guys, if there's if there's nothing else, let's let's give Brian back his time and thank and thanks again. Thank you all. Appreciate you and be well out there. Do me a favor, fill out the survey. Obviously, we sign will. up for more pivot. And I'd love to send you these items and I trust hey, that it makes a difference. In your I business. think we're supposed to all say, what is it? We, we are, hurrah or something. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, well, and we'll end it on that. And yeah. I can't believe we're about to do this, y'all. Three, two, one. We! <laughs> love y'all. Hey, I'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Thank Brian. You, My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.